Today I'm going to be reviewing the Galaxy S22 one year later. I'm going to talk about the base model that released at $800. I typically don't like to spend more than $1,000 for phones, so I usually go for the lowest tier option. $1,000 is too much for smartphones. You can get a lot of really good deals within the five to $800 range. So first of all, I'm going to do a quick price check on Amazon to see how much the Galaxy S22 costs today. Surprisingly, it is still at $780. I know like usually a few months after these phones are released, they tend to go on sale pretty often. And for the Pixel 6, one year later, it did, dra it did drop like $200 in price. But who knows, maybe they don't, they don't want to push any Galaxy S22 sales with the S23 around the corner. S23 is going to be released on February 1st. So this is probably the worst time to buy the S22 because you're going to be outdated immediately. Although the really new model looked like a pretty good option at 400 bucks or so. So if you broke your phone and absolutely need a working phone right now, that's not a bad option. The Galaxy S22 is for people like me who don't want to spend more than $1,000 for a phone. Unfortunately, at $800, you're getting a pretty small form factor. It comes in at 6.1 inches. Some people prefer the smaller phones. You can easily use it with one hand. But if you're watching YouTube and do a lot of gaming, it can feel pretty cramped. So just something to keep in mind. If you don't do a lot of gaming and like small phones, this will be the better option. I do like the forest green color on the Galaxy S22. Something unique compared to the typical black and white phones. Samsung have one of the best displays. So it is the same story here on the S22. When you think of the best smartphones and TV displays, you think of Samsung. So that narrative is still the same. And when you're buying a Galaxy phone, you're actually getting longer software support compared to Google. The S22 comes with four years of software support compared to only three years with the Google Pixel 7. With the S22, you're getting one of the fastest fingerprint sensor, similar to OnePlus, and much faster than the Google Pixel 7. You're also getting one of the best cameras that smartphones can buy. Although it is a personal preference, some people like Pixel, others like Galaxy, and you can't go wrong with iPhone photos either. But if you really do a blind camera test, you will see that the Pixel 6a, which is half the price, will deliver just as good, if not better, photos than any of the expensive phones. But one thing I like about Galaxy cameras is it has a lot of features in it such as a dual recording, the ability to switch between the main and the selfie camera at the same time. There's a lot of flexibility there, but when you're using the Pixel camera, it is pretty simple and basic. You can only use one camera at a time. If you want to use your main camera, you use that to record and then you have to stop and then you can switch back to the main camera. So there's less flexibility there, but I do like that Samsung offer a bunch of more features with that camera. The Galaxy S22 comes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which was the best that 2022 had to offer at the beginning of the year. <laughs> I know the uh, 8 Plus Gen 1 came at the latter half of the year. But at the time it was released, it was still one of the fastest chip. Everything is buttery smooth, so no issues with performances or anything like that. And some of the cons with the S22 is just a terrible battery life. With it being a smaller phone, the battery life barely lasts me through half the day. It is even worse than my Galaxy S20 from three years ago, which is unfortunate to say. 25 watt fast charging is still pretty weak by today's standards, especially when you're looking at the OnePlus 10T offering 120 watt fast charging at $650. I think that is a game changing feature. Still debatable how good it is for the battery in the long run, but hey, that's the price you pay for convenience. And with the S22, it does get warm a lot when you're using it, especially if you do a lot of gaming or use your camera pretty often. So despite having the newer chip, the phone does generally tend to run a little bit warm. Design wise, it feels super premium all around. I don't like the sharp camera frame near the lenses. I remember it jabbing me a few times when I was using it. Luckily that's going away in the Galaxy S23, even in the base model, and they're just keeping the three circular lenses that they're probably gonna make a little bit smaller. And I may be the only one complaining about these days, but there's no micro SD on the Galaxy S22. Only reason why I'm complaining about it because my Galaxy S20 still have the micro SD and it works perfectly fine. They can make all the excuse why they took it away, but I still love the ability to swap up my micro SD and my Galaxy S20. So just to wrap it up, most people when they think of smartphones, they generally think of iPhone and a Samsung. Despite Samsung running Android, which is made by Google, they blow Google away in terms of sales. 
Samsung burst into the scene with the Galaxy S3 back in the days and have been the top dog in the Android space for many years. The best sellers is actually the A series, which is a budget phone about half the price of the flagship. So Samsung's always been a big player in the smartphone space. Pretty excited for the Galaxy S23, but in reality, they don't really change that much on a year-to-year -year basis. Every year, they just slap a new processor in it just to call it a newer phone. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not that noticeable. Even my three-year-old Galaxy S20 works fine with the Snapdragon 88. No issues with performance, lag, stutter, or anything like that. And the Galaxy S20 is still supported with security update until 2024, which is probably when you absolutely have to do an update. So I think that's usually a pretty good rule of thumb. I know most, pe most people tend to just ignore it, but it protects your phone from getting hacked, your data from getting stolen, identity theft, things you don't want to deal with in the aftermath. Just make sure your phone is up to date. And I know with these, Manufacturers pumping up new phones every six months. At the, at the beginning of the year, we have the S-Series, and then we have the Fold in the latter half of the year. They always entice you with trade-in offers, and new and shiny toys are always exciting. But in reality, when I held the Galaxy S22 Ultra last year, it don't really feel that much different from when I was using the Galaxy Note 10 back in the days. So there's a hot take for you. All the changes is internally, you're getting like a newer chip and everything like that. But on a day-to-day -day basis, all these smartphones still work pretty much the same. Personally, I would not recommend the small Galaxy S22 for the price due to the fact that there is not too many differentiator compared to the competitors. The biggest thing I can probably think of is just the camera features that the Galaxy S22 have to offer that I mentioned earlier. And this is coming from the biggest Samsung fan. I had almost every single Galaxy since the S3. But as of today, I still think the Google Pixel 7 is a better deal. It is $200 less. You're getting a bigger phone, tons of software features, and pretty comparable performances on a day-to-day -day basis. Let me know you guys find these videos to be helpful and if you're going to be getting the Galaxy S23. If you're interested in videos like this, please check out my last video on the Google Pixel 6 to see if it is still worth it in 2023. Thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.